Why don't they talk to each other? Just give it a try. You may not believe it, but Lars and Lapis got a lot in common. They really do. Love Steven Universe, Rick and Morty, OKKO OK and Gravity Falls, and do you love Christmas? Can pick up a Round Table Limited Edition 2017 Christmas sweater. Reprints every three days, but will be gone by the end of the month. Order it now to get it before Christmas. Link in the description. Please. Please help. Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. I'm Ostrich Vox, and it's pretty incredible how well some characters in the universe would complement one another if they just had screen time, especially townies and gems. I mean, we've had some breadcrumbs with these ideal interactions with Greg and Rose, Amethyst and Vidalia, Pearl and Mystery Girl, and so on. They don't have to necessarily be romantic interest, but any kind of relationship or dynamic. In fact, that's one of my biggest issues with Steve Universe as a whole. We have such a large cast, yet they're all fragmented off into their own groups that never seem to converge. I'm still waiting for a Peridot and Ronaldo a moment to transpire, and I know a lot of you hate the curly hair man, but come on, they'd have the perfect dynamic. Ronaldo could spitball his crazy conspiracies with Perry as she actually tries to factor them into what she knows about Homeworld, and it leads to them exploring hypotheticals or uncovering massive plot reveals. Or Peridot would cause them to mentally snap for rapid fire trivia on basic gem knowledge. That'd be entertaining as well. Either one would suffice, really. Nevertheless, when thinking who in Beat City would get along with certain gems, there are two characters who have recently actually have quite a bit in common. Lars Riga and Lapis Lazuli. Now, before we continue, I'm going to give out a quick spoiler warning. If you haven't watched the episode Kevin Party or have yet to see the sneak preview of the episode Lars of the Stars from San Diego Comic Con, what are you doing? Go watch those and come back. For everyone else, let's continue. In the episode Raising the Barn, Lapis and Peridot learned that Steven's visit to Homeworld entailed him going to trial with the diamonds and fleeing from them, resulting in Lapis to absolutely flip out and drop everything revolving around her life on Earth. Peridot and Steven try to reason with her that the diamonds think Steven's on Homeworld and have no reason to even bother with Earth. Peridot argues that even if the diamonds do come, she thinks the Crystal Gems can win, that Lapis should stay alongside to fight the good fight. Unfortunately, this sentiment wasn't good enough for Lapis, and she still fled into outer space, taking the barn with her. Even though she didn't want it in the first place, Peridot did, but it'll probably serve as plot convenience in two episodes or so, when Steven spots the barn on an alien planet or something, because that's how this show works. Now, who else do we know currently is not only in space, but as of the next episode, managed to go way beyond the great unknown of Homeworld, and is piloting through the galaxy at marvelous speeds, and a very dapper getup. Wouldn't you know, it's our boy Lars. And he's not alone, but a company with the off colors. His trusty crew that, from what we can tell, can definitely get the job done when push comes to shove. You just don't steal a high class ship from an elite gem through minimal effort. Lars and Steven may not be the only ones who cross paths in the next arc of the series, but I have reason to believe Lavis Lazuli will find herself in the mix as well. Why? Because Lars will be the reason she reaches the breakthrough to stand side by side with the crystal gems and no longer run away from homeworld. No longer run away from her problems. This doesn't just stem from the fact these two characters are roaming through the galaxy. Galaxy, but the many similarities their personalities share. You may not realize it at first, but Lapis and Lars are two sides of the same coin. Once you lay everything out on the table, you can see that despite their very different beginnings, they more or less ended up in the same boat. Starting with Lapis, while we're still a little bit in the dark when it comes to her origins, we got the gist of her backstory in relation to the Crystal Gems and War on Earth exclusively. Lapis only intended to be on the planet for a short amount of time, likely to terraform the beta kindergarten when she got caught in a heated battle and assaulted. Following a swift poofing, she was mistaken for a Crystal Gem by Homer who imprisoned her in a mirror for thousands of years, picked up by Pearl and remains captive until she's released by Steve and yada yada yada. You know all of this. But from here on, there's a specific pattern Lapis follows. After Steven heals Lapis' gem, she returns to Homeworld and assumes that's the end of her problems until, surprise, she's interrogated and ends up as a person of interest in the case of some crystal gems interfering with Peridot checking up on the cluster. In theory, if Steven never barged in on Peridot, Lapis would have been left off the hook sooner than later. After the events of Jailbreak, Lapis is fused as Malachite at the bottom of the ocean, partially to protect Steven, but mainly to have someone be prisoner to her for a change. Yeah, she's kind of twisted like that. Post Malachite, Lapis is finally able to be free and decides to settle down in Steven's barn until she realizes she'd have to be Peridot's roommate. The two are at odds until Homeworld arrives in the form of the Ruby Squadron, where once again Lapis has to get involved to protect Steven. After distracting the Rubies with a baseball game, Lapis is finally able to just breathe. Well, besides the time Steven tries to reacquaint her with water, you know, she ran to Jasper, who was actually stalking her the entire time. It's a huge mess, but it also gets into this pattern. Yet, even after she's just able to breathe, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Lapis declines any gem-related escapade possible. Hitting up the beta kindergarten? Stay behind and watch Camp Pining Hearts. Going to the moon? Hard pass. Greg's been kidnapped and taken to a human zoo in space? She has no qualms with staying behind. Then suddenly, Navy falls out of the sky, begs to be a crystal gem, and seems to be quite adjusted to the planet immediately, upsetting Lapis. She states it's impossible to be that well off so soon, yet also questions her own mental state. 
something. When her doubts about Navy are validated as the Ruby's betrayal is revealed, she basks in the fact that her intuition is correct. All of this points towards Lapis being rather selfish and uncaring towards most people, only having a soft spot for Steven and Paradox. That's not the pattern, however, and you haven't picked up on the pattern yet, you might as we run down Lars's journey. While he hasn't been caught up in an alien war from the jump, Lars was someone who had a mundane life and seemingly had a desire to keep it that way, narrowly avoiding Steven at every chance he got. A shame to be seen with him in public. The first on-screen instance of Lars being sucked into the utter insanity that is Steven's universe is briefly in the episode Frybo, when he's assaulted by the living mascot, being force-fed fries. Nothing minor, but this is still a spectacle created by Steven. He also had an encounter with Steven's cat fingers and Steven's rapid aging crisis. But the second and really the first major time Lars found himself unwillingly wrapped up in Steven's hijinks was in the episode Lars and the Cool Kids. While you can argue his constant disregard for Steven contributed to the final conflict of the episode, which it totally did, and his fit of rage towards Steven, Lars's claims he knew if something went wrong, it'd be due to Steven and his weird mom. And while yes, Lars was a complete and total ass in this moment, this was really the beginning of both his character arc and a series of unfortunate events becoming sucked into Steven's antics. Joking victim? While skipping work and lying to Sadie wasn't cool, most teens fib to get out of their job at least once. He didn't deserve to have his mouth set on fire. While that alone was pretty extreme, he still atones for his decision at the episode's end. Island Avenger? You know this man did not want to go on a deserted island. And although he bonded with Sadie, she staged their stranding to do so. Then there's Horror Club, being sacrificed to a corrupted gem by Ronaldo. Because, once again, Steven and Sadie antics. Lars's encounters with gem shenanigans only get more outrageous as the series progresses, being flat out possessed by Steven, and leading up to where he is now, being abducted, killed, and resurrected, all because Steven once gave out his name carelessly, and the fact he ditched the cool kid's potluck. Do you see the pattern? Lapis and Lars are both characters who try to avoid dangerous or supernatural situations Steven got them sucked into, being dragged in against their will almost every single time. Despite both of them having a habit of being selfish, albeit in different ways, they only display a soft spot for Steven and the only other person who tries to understand them, paired out for Lapis and Sadie for Lars. They both prefer their mundane lives to doing nothing, having every day be a lazy day. They both have shut down when confronted on the problems before becoming completely vulnerable. They are very, very alike. Even Lars's mission right now mirrors Lapis's in her debut. He just wants to get back home, much like how she wanted to go home. Except while she's going from Earth to Homeworld, he's going from Homeworld to Earth. It's only at this exact point in time that their similarities have begun to diverge. Whereas Lars is right by Steven's side on Homeworld, though he didn't have much of a choice, Lapis wants to be as far away as physically possible. Lars gave support, saying they'll figure it out. While Lapis just gives a simple deuces, the current situation gave Lars the courage to believe in himself, to stand up and fight for others, but caused Lapis to shut everyone out who wasn't down with fleeing. Lapis got out while Lars got in, and that's a detail I can't see being ignored. For the longest time, I was rattling my brain thinking, who should be the one to bring Lapis onto Steven's side completely? Steven himself? Peridot? Both of them? One of the Crystal Gems? But no, none of these were the right answer. It has to be Lars. As we've seen in the new Crystal Gems of Connie, Lapis will actually listen to humans if they show some backbone. And man, does Lars have plenty of that now. And Lars looks more gem than human now, so that probably also helps a great deal. If Lars and Lapis cross paths, if Lars hears Lapis' stance on everything, he'd be the one to sit her down and actually get through to her. She doesn't want to get caught up in another war. That's completely understandable and justified. And I think Lars will get that. But Lars will also explain, he had a normal, boring life. And that was all stripped from him due to Steven. But maybe it was for the best because it caused Lars to come out of his shell. That running away seems like the easiest thing to do. That he ran his whole life. He ran from the party. He ran from Topaz when Sadie was in trouble. But really, it's the unhealthiest option. Lars will get through to Lapis that facing your problems head on is the only real solution. Everything would just click naturally. And Lapis would have someone who actually gets her. Someone who's actually just like her. And while Lars hasn't been trapped in a mirror for thousands of years, he has still endured quite a bit. He too has been a prisoner before. He too is on a run from a galactic empire. He too is well scared, but he's not going to let that hold him back. And neither should she. Lars would give Lapis the strength, the push she needed to no longer run away, but join the fight. He will show her how to be strong in the real way. Now you may be thinking, seriously? Steven and Peridot wouldn't do anything? My ship doesn't agree with this. And relax. While I can picture this definitely being grounds for some shipping bait, it isn't about romance or anything. It's about Lapis connecting with someone who truly understands her, that's gone through anything remotely similar that she's gone through, and that's Lars. Who knows? Maybe when Lapis gets back to Earth, she'll start associating with more townies as a result. This ideal interaction and friendship wouldn't sabotage your Lapidots or your Lars Sadies. It's simply characters finding help from unexpected places. And if you can
can't tell by this theory, I'm all for it. But what are your thoughts? Do you think Lars is the missing piece in the puzzle that is Lapis Lazuli? Do you think they mesh well together? Let's get a conversation going by commenting below or tweeting your thoughts directly to me at Austric Fox. You can follow the Roundtable on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at Roundtable Vids, and we're on Snapchat at Roundtable YT. We have a Discord, official Amino app, and Patreon. Don't forget to check out and snag a Roundtable Christmas sweater, and if you do, thank you. Links to everything in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order a like, share it with your friends, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, it really helps us out. Hit that bell for notifications so you can stay in the loop of all things Steven. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Ostrich Vox, signing out.